You're the guy I think 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 you're the Programming languages are very useful for rapidly completing completing um, repetitive tasks from multiple basic calculations to just about any other situation where you've got to where you've got a lot of similar items of work to complete. Here we will look at the loop structure we live in JavaScript that handles such needs. <coughs> Keep me the loop. <coughs> loops, loops, loops. As well as being associated with a popular breakfast cereal, Willa Costa, and music, musical production. They are also a critical concept in programming. Programming loops are all to do with doing the same thing over and over again, which is then iteration in programming speak. In programming speak, let's consider the case of a farmer who is making sure he has no food to feed his family for the week. May I use the following loop to achieve this? <coughs> Do I have food? Yes. Cook at home. Okay. Cook at home. Collect food. I have no food. Okay. Um, the loop usually has one or more of the following features. The counter, which is initialized with a certain value. This is the starting point of the loop that I have no to go. An exit condition, which is the criteria under which the loop stops, usually the, the counter reaching a, a certain value. Usually, usually counter reaching a certain value. This is illustrated by why got no food. Let's say he needs 10 portion of food to feed his family. An iterator <coughs> generally increments the counter by a small amount in each successive loop until it reaches the exit condition. We haven't explicitly illustrated this above, but we could think about the common being able to collect, say, two portions of food per hour. After each hour, the amount of food he has collected is incremented by two. And he checks whether he has enough food. If he has, if he has, if he has reached 10 portions, there is condition, he can stop collecting and go home. In pseudo code, this would look this would look something like the following. Loop food equals zero, food that equals 10. If food greater than equals to food needed, we did the loop. We have enough to let go home. Else, two plus plus equals to that is dimensions two by two. Spend an hour collecting two more food. <coughs> we will then run again. So the amount of food needed needed is set at ten. The amount the farmer currently has is set at zero. If it is on the new iteration of the loop, we check whether the amount of food Summer has is larger or equal to the amount we need. If so, we can exit the loop. If not, the summer spends an hour collecting two percent of food and the loop runs again. Why bother? At this point, you probably understand the high level concept behind loops, but you are probably thinking, okay, great, but how does this help me write better JavaScript code? As you said earlier, loops are all to do with doing the same thing over and over again. Which is which rapidly completing tasks. Often the code will be slightly different on each successive iteration of the, of the loop, which means that you are you are complete. You can complete a whole load of tasks that are similar but slightly different. So if you've got a lot of different iterations to do, you want to do you want to do each different you want to do each, each different one. Not the same one over and over again. Let's look at an example perfectly illustrate why loops are such a good thing. Let's say we want to draw 10 random circles in a canvas. 
in the covers element where is important to run the, the example again and again to see the different random set. <clears throat> we don't understand all the code now, so let's look at the part of the code that actually draws the inbred circuit. Okay, this is the for loop for let i equals zero. We're initializing the um, counter. Then this is the um, this is the this is the every condition term. Um, this is the exit condition. This is the increment. You implement the for loop by i plus plus. Then go in ctx dot begin path. Ctx dot use use star equals rgba ctx dot arc random width random height random fifty zero to two times mark dot five ctx dot fill random. Random defined earlier in the code return the old number with zero and x minus one. Width and height are the width and height of the inner browser window. You should get the basic idea. We are using the loop to run the iteration of the produce code. Each one of these draws the same to the random position of the code. The amount of code needed to be to be the same when, whether we were going in the equipment or not. Only one number has to change. If we weren't using a loop, we would have to repeat the following code for every second we want to draw. This would get very boring and difficult to maintain very quickly. Loops really are the best. The standard. Standard for loop. Let's say exploring change specifically function. Let's start exploring change specifically function. The first, the first which you will use most of the time is the for loop. This has the following syntax for initializer, exit, exit condition, power express, final expression, code to run. Here yeah, we have the keyword for followed by some parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we have the three, we have three items, represented by semicolon, initializer. This is usually a variable set to a number, which is permitted to count the number of times, loop as, as, as one. We also something referred to as counter variable. And every condition, I mentioned before, with the this defines when the loop should stop looping. This, this is generally an expression point to comparison of it to test to see if the exit condition has been met. The final expression, this is always evaluated or wrong. Each time the loop has gone through a full iteration, we usually, it usually serves to implement or in some cases, we can make the counter variable to bring it to so bring it closer to the exit condition value. So curly braces that contain the block of code, this code will be wrong each time the loop exits. Let's look at a real a real example so we can realize what is what this what this do more clearly. Constant cast initialize the loop. To, uh, to, to list so to marry. let info equals my card at all transfer equals document the query selector b getting the value of the for let i equals zero i less than card dot length i plus plus this is the initializer initializer this is the technical condition this is the uh, final expression. This is, in this case, incrementing i. So this is the uh, block of code. Info, info plus equals cat i plus comma. Uh, the text content equals info. If this does the following output, 
Nikas Nakol Bill Jeff did produce just me. So this will be you to run through this on the way. This show this <coughs> this show will be being used to like go over the items in an array, do something with each item. A very common pattern in JavaScript. The way it works in JavaScript here. The iterator one, the iterator i starts at zero and let i equal zero. It has been told to run until it is no longer smaller than the length of that array. This is important. Every condition shows the condition under which it is. We still run two. In this case, i while i less than start button is to loop is still wrong. Three. Inside the loop, we concentrate. We concatenate the current loop item start uh, box bracket i to start whatever i is at the time, along with the comma and the space until the until the end of the info <coughs> variable. So one doing the first one i equals zero. So start box bracket zero plus comma space. Will be populated onto on info view. During the second one, high pose one, so that box bracket one, yes, comma space, will be populated onto info step. And so on, after each time loop has run, one will be added to i, next plus plus, then the process will start again. When I becomes equal to let them cut dot length, the loop will stop and brother will move into the next bit of code to load the loop. Note, I have made the exit condition i less than cut dot length, not i less than equals to cut dot length. Because computer count from zero, not one, we are starting i at zero and, and going up to i equals four. The index of the last item. That's the length returns five as the as there are there are five items in the array, but we don't want to get up to five. We don't want to get up to i equals five as that as that will return on the five for the last item. There's no array item with an index of five. So therefore we want to go up to less than that dot length, i less than not the same as cast between i less than or equals to. Note a common mistake with exit condition is making them use use equal to rather than use less than or equal to. If we want to run our loop up to i equals five, the exit condition would need to be i less than or equals to at that length. If we set it to i equals equals Specifically, because to the fact that then, the loop will not run before because i is not equal to 5 in the first loop iteration, so it will stop immediately. One small problem we are left with is that the final output sentence isn't well, well formed. My cards are called Bill, Jeff, Pete, Google, Jasmine. Ideally, we want to change the concatenation and the final loop by so show that we haven't got a command at the end of the sentence. Well, no problem. We can quite happily insert a conditional inside our for loop to undo this special case. You can find this important with for as with all loop. We must make sure that the initializer is iterated so that it eventually reaches the exit condition. If not, the loop will go on, will go on forever. And either the browser will, will force it to stop or it will crash. It's called infinite loop. The different loop will, will break. <laughs> if you want to execute a loop before all the system has executed. You can use the break statement. We already met this in in the previous article when we looked at switch statement. 
When a case is met in a switch statement, it matches the input expression. The break statement immediately exits the switch statement and moves into the code after it. The same is the same with loop. The break statement will immediately exit the loop and move it, rather move on to any code that follows it. Say we want to set through an array of contacts and telephone numbers and return just the number we want to find. First, some simple HTML is the text input allows us to enter a name to search for a to search for the button element element to submit the search and the P and the paragraph element to display the result in the label for search search by contact in the input search input ID search and the button set P. Uh, now on to the JavaScript. So contact, contact. Basically, this is an array of <coughs> contact. Contact by document. So this one gets the value for the P tag. The input gets the value for the input tag. Button um, gets the value for the button tag. So button does add event with the input. I listen to the event from the button. So when the event is active, so when the button is clicked, this function is executed. So when the button is clicked, so let's search name equals into the value. Into the value equals empty string. Into the focus. For let i equal zero, i less than contact with length, I plus plus. So the sizer, the break, and the uh, increments. Let's keep contact because contact I is split by colon. If so, you're picking each, uh, each contact and splitting it, which also returns um, an array. Yes? Yeah, which also returns an array. So if the first value which is going to be the name of that particular contact is equals the set name. So the name that is being imputed into the uh, input, input, input tag. Then this particular line will be executed. After that, it will break the loop and the whole loop will stop. Else, if this particular condition is not true, it does this. And goes back and goes back again on and on and on. If, if you go through to an one of the uh, and the, the set is never equals to and set name is never equals to split contact zero at the back row, you print out this. So let's and this is the uh, what is this I'm trying to print out. So let's test for this. So this is the output. Let's search for in um, the contact that doesn't exist to see what happens if uh, split contact is split contact that zero is not equal to second. Uh, let's say John. See, in fact, no problem. This particular part is because the most three zeros doesn't, John is not uh, available. <coughs> One, first of all, we have some variable de definition. We have an array of contact information with each item being a string containing a name and phone number separated by a colon. Next, we attach an event listener to the button so that when it is said, some code is being performed the search and return results. We store the value entered into the text into the variable called section. Before implementing the text input and focusing, focusing it again, ready for the next step. Now, into the into the just purple follow. We start the counter at zero, from the loop until the counter is no longer less than contact with me, and you can make I by the counter is a different of two. Inside the loop, we 
best place to find find contact. Contact I at the column. Character. At the column character. Install the resulting true values in an array called split contact. We then use a conditional statement to test whether split contact at index zero, the contact name is equal to the imputed set name. If it is if it is we enter we enter a string into the paragraph to report what the contact number is. We use break to name the loop. After constant dot length minus one equation, if the contact name does not match the if the contact name does not match the entered set, the paragraph text is set to contact me for a loop and smooth operation. Keeping the iteration with continue. The continue statement works in a similar manner to break, but instead of breaking out the loop entirely, it skips, it skips to the next iteration of the loop. Let's look at the look, let's look at another example that takes the number as an input and return only the number that are squared square of incidents or numbers. The item is basically the same as the last example. It's simply put into it in paragraph or the the dollar is mostly from two, although the loop itself is a bit different. So this is Initializing n to the input value, okay. We need to do that. Let i go into the that. Let square is equal to mark of square i. If mark of floor, then let's see what the problem was. In this case, the input should be a known to know. So the for loop is given the counter counter starting as we are not interested in two in this case. An exit condition that says the loop will stop when the counter becomes bigger than the number. No. In our iterator that has been to the counter this time, inside the loop we find the square root of each of each number using matters square height and check. Whether the query is the input of the testing, whether it is the same as the stuff when it has been pounded down to the nearest integer. So, what mark of flow does the number is passed? <coughs> if the square root in the rounded number square root is not equal to one another, I know to cross to. Next to the multiple three means that the square continues. The square root is not an integer, so we are not interested in it. In such a case, we use the continue statement to skip into the next iteration without recording the norm anywhere. anywhere. If, the, if the root is an integer, we skip past the if block entirely, so the continue statement is not repeated instead. We can calculate the current high value that is placed in to the end of the paragraph. So, Wow, and do wow. <coughs> Four is not the only type of loop available in JavaScript. There are actually many other, many others. And while you do not need to understand all of this now, it is worth having a look at the structure of the popular code so that you can recognize the same features that work in slightly different ways. First, let me have a look at the wow loop. So this this loop seems like a loop. So initializer, wow, exit condition, 
αυτό έτσι να είναι άλλες πρόσφυγες. Το Βιμσελάιδι ΑΕΠ, γιατί τον είχαν δει τα άλλες πρόσφυγες και είχε με το δίκτυμα του Λάς Πάτερ, του Ιντζόπος Κούρου, του Λάου, του This is what we similar way to the four loops, except that in the last way we set the four loops. The final expression is the period inside of the after the code to me. Rather than this two items being included inside the parenthesis, the three conditions is the period inside the parenthesis, which are <coughs> considered by the world to be work, rather than four. <coughs> The same, the same two items are still present and they are still defined in the same order as they are in the four of this book, and we still have to show an intellectual to find four. You can check whether it is with a rich relative condition. The final condition is then known after the code inside the loop as well, which will only have to do with. Every condition has still, has still not been reached. Let's have a look at the at our card. Card list example. We will return to use the raw loop. The blue raw loop is very similar. The very similar but provide the variation in the raw structure. Initializer, two, go to Final expression while wow, is a condition. In this case, the initializer again comes first before the loop starts. To do the word directly, we see the following case containing the code to the end of the final expression. The differentiator here is that the every condition comes after the after everything is wrapped in one process. And considered by raw zero. In the do raw loop, the code inside the curly braces is always is always one once before the check is made to see if it should be executed again. <coughs> In while and for check comes first, so the code might never be executed. Let's write our cut a cut with me. Example is going to be the dual loop. So, initializer, the code to run, the uh, final expression is implement, the while, the output condition. Okay. The dual and dual as the all loop is just make sure that the initializer is a cheaper so that. Active learning, launch, and down. In this exercise, we want to bring out a simple long term launch. Output, the output box from 10 down to plus 12. We really want you to look from 10 down to 0. And provided if we have provided you with a initializer, let i equals 1. For each document, create a new paragraph and append it to the new page B, which we have selected using terms as the equal document the whole selector for the output. In, in comments, we provided you with three. We could, we could like that need to be moved somewhere inside the loop. And far, far, I call that mended. Or paragraph, I call that mended. Create element paragraph. Create a new paragraph. How to put a pen child, R. Pen the paragraph into to the output P. Part of text content makes the text inside the paragraph equal to whatever you put. On the right side after the equal sign. Two and three. Different, different addition numbers require different text to put, to put in the paragraph for that, that addition. 
Do you need a conditional statement to multiply the first integer? If the number is 10, print down the 10 to the power of. If the number is 0, print black to the power of. For any other number, print just the number to the power of. Remember to include an iterator. However, in this example, we are counting that after each equation, not of. So, you don't want I plus plus. How do you implement that one? If you make a mistake, you can reset in the example. You can reset that you need to get the list of first show conditions. Please look at that. So, um, Okay. We have to do the um, look through um, the right thing. I think I will go to the new file and send it to the right thing. Which you select here using the transactions. And then you will see the right thing. You need to put it in the right thing. You need someone inside the table. Create a new browser, then browser to the different magnetic number. Okay, beside which I uh, my two um, <coughs> if I am using the for loop, so if I'm using the for loop, let me use the while loop. So we are only salivating. So, so we have um, so I like that. So, but I, um, this is the to We are stopping at zero. So, here I go to zero, zero. Increment it. And I, so, we're um, looking to go to the other side of the world. We're the other side of So I can go through the instruction while I say that. I need to go back and say. So, we've done the fact of transfer the case to each equation to the part of the We have nothing to do with this one. Then, The different position number requires very different things to be included in the parallel. If the number equals zero. One thing real quick. Uh, okay. In your while loop right now, okay. you see at the end you have I++. plus plus. Is that what yeah. you want to happen? Oh, so yeah. <laughs> we don't <laughs> go back and forth with the yeah. question. 
peak. Yeah, that'll make an infinite loop because it'll just keep adding one and it'll never get yeah, to yeah. zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a question, assistant. <laughs> okay, uh, differentiation numbers require different things to put in the paragraph for that condition. You need a condition, a conditional statement, paragraph. So, um, if Plus zero. Last. Last thing. <clears throat> I think Nico works fine, works very fine. So you can see the zero blast off for countdown 10. Fuck, you're up to speed. Fuck. Fuck. Hello? Good, DK, what's up? Yeah, what's you're up? up Sorry. You're up to speed. Can I go on? Sorry, say that again. Should I go on? Like, are you up to speed? No, uh, listen, you get tired of talking. You can switch off, man. Yeah, if you're done, I can go. Okay. Um, bro, if you can go on, let me stop sharing. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, active learning, filling in a guest list. Let me make sure my mic's, my mic's on, right? You guys can hear me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. yeah, good to go. All right. In this exercise, we want you to take a list of names stored in an array and put them into a guest list, but it's not quite that easy. We don't want to let Phil and Lola in because they are greedy and rude and always eat all the food. We have two lists, one for guests to admit and one for guests to refuse. 
Specifically, we want you to write a loop that will iterate from zero to the length of the people array. You'll need to start with a, an initializer of let i equal to zero, but what exit condition do you need? During each loop iteration, check if the current array item is equal to fill or Lola. Using a conditional statement, if it is, concatenate the array item to the end of the refused paragraph's text content, followed by a comma and a space. If it isn't, concatenate the array item to the end of the admitted paragraph's text content, followed by a comma and a space. We've already provided you with let i equal zero, your initializer, refused dot text content plus equal, uh, the beginnings of a line that will concatenate something onto the end of refuse dot text content and admitted dot text content plus equals the beginnings of a line that will concatenate something onto the end of admitted dot text content. Extra bonus question. After completing the above task successfully, you will be left with two lists of names separated by commas, but they will be untidy. There will be a comma at the end of each one. Can you work out how to write lines that slice the last comma off in each case and add a full stop to the end? Have a look at the useful string methods article for help. If you make a mistake, you can always reset the example with the reset button. If you, really, if you get really stuck, press show solution to see a solution. All right. So depending on the names, we want to add them to two different lists. And as a bonus, they want us to make it so the end of the lists uh, don't end with a comma. What's a full stop? Does anyone know? I think they just want to replace the uh, comma and space with a period. Oh, okay. All right. If you make that's how I understand it. Yeah. I'll see if I can do that. All right, so first thing, I'll, I'll use a for loop. People die length. And do optimize plus. And so if people I is equivalent to Lola or if people I is equal to who was it? Phil. Phil. <laughs> we wanna Let me indent this. Oof. All right, so actually, now what I'm going to do is if it's not equivalent to Phil or Lola. I want to do it a text contact plus equal people spell right. and Colin Terry. Wait, that's not right. 
We don't want Phil and Lola on the guest list. So it starts at Chris. Not equal. Uh, hmm. So it starts, checks. Well, I think you just not cut in and I rewrite them. So I think um, just people is, I think it's okay. Say that again, sorry. I think it just goes concatenate and I write them. That means the particular item when that particular um the when the if statement is true. So you think it's just um just people a uh, box bracket I think that should be it, that part. Then the next one, if it's even compatible, the array item to be the name. Should it not be the OR operator? Yeah, that's what it was. Because with the OR operator, it's never Lola and Phil, so one of those is false, which changes the whole thing to true, so it kept adding both names. So the statement is even stated that it's supposed to be OR. What do you think? So the statement, right? The question state Phil or Lola. So I mean, when when that when either of them is true, then this first this first mission will be uh, taken care of. We choose the reality. All right. So I think so. These are the lists we want, and now we want to change it so the lists don't end with a period. Yeah. So for, for the first one, we are going to add it to refuse, I guess. Wait, what happened? For the, what happened with the first one? The first one, we are adding it to refuse. So. Are we? I thought, uh, did I read it wrong? No, you're good. Okay. You're using a, the and operator, yeah, it makes it. Yeah. If neither of those are, are you know. In the, yeah. On that list. Yeah, okay. so the lists are right, right? Now. This is what we want for the list, right? Right. You want yeah. everyone and now we just want to and then everyone make it look on. better so it doesn't end with a, a right. comma. Uh, so how would we want to do that? So what's a string method you could do that replaces? Uh, Ooh, perfect. Oh, wait. How do I? You could use replace, but wouldn't yeah. it replace all the commas with periods? Well, so yeah, I guess uh, you could use. Can you use specific indexes in the string with replace? I don't know. Let me see. Uh, let yeah. Let, oops, I just opened it on this. Whatever. I'll go back. Let's look. Really. String character. String character. Index of slice. Uh, ch what I could do is slice everything except up to the last so if we're outside of the loop and I do admitted admitted the text content 
from zero to it's less in the last the last um part so uh, oh, no, that would do it from the start to the last one right and then if you added just a period maybe not so right now you're just, it's just the document query selector so you're not selecting that oh. admitted just, oh, okay. so. i have to do that admitted is okay it's just a query selector for the class yeah. that is right so how would you actually get onto the text of uh how would you actually access the text from uh used text content um, yep but can you use sliced with that yeah because it's returning um a string right like your, okay. the text content yeah text okay. content is just the, like attribute right but but i guess you'd have to yeah content if i tried to So it would be like minus possibly. I don't know. Let me see if there maybe there's a different method I could use. I think it's whether I use something of index. You also might have to store it in a variable. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If uh, we made the list, stored them into a variable, that might make it easier to yeah. work with them. Filter ingredient. Oh, this is all active learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so so that variable text should have the text content of admitted. Is that how that? Let me see. Make sure to see how that works. Okay, so yeah, it does work like that. Awesome. So now if I have, if I did text slice, maybe it'll work now. Zero to text of length. I don't think that's going to work because it's no. you're slicing the actual string, but you're not assigning it to the actual like place. You're not assigning yeah. it to it, right? So maybe start with the original assignment, so the admitted dot text content, and then do the admitted dot text content equals slice. It, it took admitted dot text content slice. Oh, okay. Like yeah. so, you're, you're basically re-replacing uh, whatever you're doing. That yeah. might be easier.
I think that might be returning a string because you're just giving admitted oh. text content is the string. So how would so you yeah, find out the, the yeah, length? Yeah, from the back. Can't you just um, use, um, okay, oh. okay, oh, hold on, there you go. Uh, there we go, and then could, if I wanted to, Wait, um, the length minus one. So to yeah, give out the last um, item. It might be more than that, right? Because if you do minus one, you're just returning the whole string. Yeah, okay, minus two, that. there you go. To get the last comma off, and then you do, right, just add a period or something like that. So we do the same thing with uh, refused text comma. Slice it from the start to minus two from the length, and then oh, yeah. yeah. So I think that's what they wanted. Oh, please let me see. Can you scroll up? Or let me see your code. Uh, you saying you need to see my code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, can you see it? Is yeah, it big enough? It. All right. Yeah, it is. So yeah, I used a for loop, and the initialization is i equals zero. Uh, to the exit condition is people dot length, and then i plus plus. And so, if the index that we're at is not equal to Lola or Phil, it's going to add that name to the admitted text content uh, to the admit list. And uh, the only other case would be if it's Lola or Phil, and then we add it to the refuse uh, list. And then right. down here, this is where we get rid of the end commas on both lists and add a period. Right. So you're basically filtering through that first list, filtering through uh, the string Lola and Phil, separating them out. Yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm ready to go also. I'm done. All right. <laughs> so which loop type should you use? Hey, uh, can y'all just look at my code real quick? Because um, when I added those yeah. bottom two, it took away all my code. I don't know if I typed something wrong. OK. Yeah. Uh, Stop sharing. Say, say, uh, Might be hard to see. Uh, minute dot text. Oh, yeah. So you, uh, it looks like you're you're running to the same issue. So within that slice, mm -hmm. I think you're returning a string and not a number, right? Because the minute dot text contents just returns well, the length. actual like string. Yeah, so I just need to change it to admitted? admitted no, it just it's like convert it to a, to a number. Sorry, y'all were talking at the same time. Yeah, oh, sorry. Okay, you need to change the admitted the text the length. We need the length of, of the admitted the text content, not the string itself. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying here. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's yeah. returning a string. Yeah, no, 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 you no, leave text the text content. Just after that, just add the length. Oh, well, that does got it. it, got it, got it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you do admit it, yeah, admit it dot text content is just going to return a string. You need so, simple. Yeah. Uh, admit, um, you need to, that's what I mean, you need to change it to uh, refuse. Um, how am I admit. getting these extra dots in here? No, like check your, oh. um, it's the last line you're using admitted dot text dot length. This is a uh, refuse. There you go. Yeah, so voila. Mm. No, because it. No, because it's a reference now. <laughs> yeah. Sense <laughs> fuse dot text something minus two plus. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, it's even cutting it here too. Yeah. 
Is it the same scenario with that or? Because technically, hmm. no, because it's showing up. Yeah, his should be fine because he's doing the opposite of what I did. If it's right, right, or right. Lola, he's adding it. Right, so, right. If I, I, I minus did, one. So I did this way also. I need my own work. I did this way also. It looks like it's adding a period to each. Mm. Why is it adding a period after each comma? Oh, because I got it in the for loop. That's why. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out what was going on. It's in the for loop. It's a lot. Why is it doing that? <laughs> okay, so this does need to be two. There we go. Oh, we need to be two, yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, um, wow, she can go ahead. With. All right, next section. Which loop type should you use? For basic uses, for, while, and do while loops are largely interchangeable. They can all be used to solve the same problems, and which one you use will largely, largely depend on your personal preference. Which one you find easiest to remember or most intuitive? Let's have a look at them again. So here's a for loop. Uh, use for, then the initializer, the exit condition, the final expression, and then you put the code after the parentheses inside the curly braces. A while loop, you have the initializer outside of the loop, and then you use the while keyword, and then have the exit condition in parentheses, and the code you want to run inside the curly brackets with the final expression at the end of the loop. And finally, the do while loop, which is very similar to the while loop, except uh, you start it with the keyword do, and then the code goes inside the curly braces, and the final expression is at the end of the do loop. And after the loop, you put while the exit condition. We would recommend for at least to begin with, as it is probably the easiest for remembering everything. The initializer, exit condition, and final expression all have to go neatly into the parentheses, so it is easy to see where they are and check that you aren't missing them. Yeah, I still use for loops uh, more than while and do while loops. Note, there are other loop types slash features too, which are useful in advanced slash specialized situations and beyond the scope of this article. If you want to go further with your loop learning, read our advanced loops and iteration guide. Conclusion. This article has revealed to you the basic concepts behind and different options available when looping coding JavaScript. You should now be clear on why loops are a good mechanism for dealing with repetitive code and be raring to use them in your own examples. If there's anything you didn't understand, feel free to read through the article again or contact us to ask for help. All right, so any questions on for, do, do while, and while loops? No, I mean, like for loops are in everything, so I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I run into them quite a lot. I don't think I've really done do while in a very long time. Yeah. I've run them more in like PHP, like through WordPress, than I've ever done through like JavaScript. Cool. All right. So uh, let's. Purpose of people using do while well, do loops. Like, I haven't like encountered a scenario in which I use it. You mean do while loops? Yeah. So you have something that you need to run one iteration before it checks the uh, exit statement. You know, I, I know. I know how it works, but like, mm -hmm. I never encountered a scenario in which I use it. Oh, you've never encountered. I thought you were saying I mean, you probably, do encounter. <laughs> probably because it's like similar to the for loop, right? Like while this is happening, you have an iterator, probably like you set an iterator before the while loop. And then within that while loop, you're incrementing or decrementing that, that inter iterator. So it's essentially the same thing as the for loop. Yeah. Or I guess if there's something is true in a length or whatever. Yeah, it would make sense if you had like a do while loop, like if you loaded up a web page and you wanted it to do something one time. And then I guess if you want to iterate through an array of things that go onto a web page, yeah, that's, that seems to be the common thing. Like, well, there's actually uh, a for loop for that, which I actually think uh, is really oh, yeah, useful. The for in and for of loops. Yeah, yeah. 
they didn't talk yeah. about them in that article, but I actually really like those loops for like iterating through arrays and objects. Is it for or of is for is for in or for of one of them like mainly for objects? I think for in is used mostly for objects and right. for of is used mostly for arrays. Right. But I think they're interchangeable. Like you can do both with either, but one is preferred for the other. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. cool, cool. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back and do this next section. All right, sounds good. I'll start off this uh, function section. All right, we'll when we stop get the back. recording while we're on break.